Here is my definition of a vector, and it's right here. This is a vector. When you hear the word vector, you may hear, you may think of three various alternatives, of which this one is probably last. Now, I don't really want to say more in, as far as specifying the definition is by saying that this is what it is. A vector, for the purposes of this course, in most physics applications and lots of engineering applications, is a directed segment. You should think of it as a real physical object. Yes, it's probably infinitely thin, so that's not a perfect representation. You know, but that's what a vector is. It is a physical, maybe call it geometric, directed segment. It's a segment that has a length and a direction. Now, you may be familiar with two alternative definitions of vectors, and I will actually make a little table just so that it's clear in your mind what the taxonomy is. So definition number one defi is the definition that I just gave. I won't write much on the board, but enough that I can talk about these pieces. So that's, that's not bad. A directed segments in our everyday three-dimensional space. That's one way to think of vectors. That's our way to think of vectors. That's our way of thinking of vectors for this course. If you took a linear algebra course, in linear algebra, a vector is a different sort of animal. These would be called geometric vectors, and they just serve as an inspiration for what kind of object to call a geometric vector. And that object would be given, defined, axiomatically. In linear algebra, a vector would be any kind of object that can be added together and multiplied by numbers. So any kind of object, V1, maybe put a little, well, actually no. They would, we would probably use bold letters to denote vectors. So I would actually like to reserve little arrows for this sort of thing. So I won't use little arrows. So V1 represents one vector. V2 represents another vector. And they're the sorts of objects that you can add together and multiply by numbers. There you go. And any object that can be added together and multiplied by a number is called a vector. And in that paradigm, this, the geometric vector, would be one example. Another example would be polynomials. Polynomials can be added together and multiplied by numbers to produce another polynomial. In that framework, polynomials are vectors. What else? Audio signals. What else? Well, a very important example, elements of Rn. This is an element of R3, but an element of Rn would be a set of n numbers. Can you add them together? Yes. Can you multiply them by a number? Yes, it's a vector. So that's what a vector is in linear algebra. That's not, I'll repeat, how we're going to use the word vector in this class. This, this is how we're going to use the word vector in this class. So get used to it. A physical object. You might be nervous a little bit because you're thinking, what am I going to do with this? This is not mathematical. This is just a stick. What am I going to be able to do with this in a math course? Well, it turns out a whole lot. Now let me just talk about what a lot of people call vectors, is basically focusing on Rn. Okay? In a lot of courses on linear algebra, this would be called a vector. And the entire course, for example, Gilbert Strang course, focuses on objects like this as vectors. And then objects like this sort of become the geometric interpretation of something that you would obtain algebraically. So a perfectly legitimate approach, but a very specific approach. And once again, not what we're doing here. Okay, for us, a geometric vector, to repeat myself one more time, is a physical object like this. And what I want you to really, really focus on the habit that I want you to break 
is immediately introducing a basis and thinking of, an obje of this object as being equivalent to a set of three numbers. So try to break that tendency because when you do that automatically, you are sort of stripping this object of a lot of beautiful properties that it intrinsically has. And you might forget and, or, and never get those properties back. And sometimes your choice of basis, too, will introduce artifacts. And when you arrive at a result, you will sometimes not know, am I looking at the artifact of the particular basis that I chose? Or am I looking at a physical property of the object that I'm studying? This is not what you will find in any book. In any book, when there's a chapter one, introduction to vectors, right? This may be mentioned first, typically not, but it may be mentioned first. And then right there on page one, there is this, right? There's a Cartesian coordinate system and the two objects are completely intertwined. So that's what will be very different about our approach. There will not be intertwined at all. In fact, we will not see this for as long as humanly possible. And we'll do as much, we'll go as far as we can with these objects, okay? So that's, that's vector calculus. And we have now introduced the fundamental object that we will study that is a vector, a physical vector.